So this is part two of how our money habits are helping us. Um, hopefully you've gone through the previous exercise in part one, which is where you picked one bad money habit um, and you went through an exercise of exploring what the benefits of that were for you. So what was positive about it, how it was helping you and how it was making you feel. So now we're going to flip that and we're going to actually do the reverse. We're going to look at how that habit is getting in the way how it's hindering us, what are the challenges that we face by having that habit. So I'm going to continue with the example that I shared before, um, which is that I never used to look at the bills or the letters. Um, and I didn't do that because I just didn't feel that there was enough money and there was a lot of fear and scare and demands in those letters. Um, so we identified that I was feeling safe and didn't have to face that fear, which was two really good positives, and that I had an element of control. But when I switched it, it was not helping me because I ended up having to pay more. When you don't attend to the bill soon, much like when you get a parking ticket, the actual amount you owe increases. So invariably, those of us with less actually end up paying more. So when there is less income coming in, it's even more important that we actually do focus on those sooner because it's going to cost us more in the long run. <clears throat> so one of the main challenges of not looking was that it cost me more in the long run. Um, one of the other downsides and main challenges was whilst I never had to face the actual fear by opening those envelopes, what it gave me was an ongoing underlying anxiety. I think I referred to it as before as almost phobic. So I'd lie in bed until after the postman had been. I'd listen for the letterbox, I'd know it'd been, and then I'd psych myself up and then I'd go and pick them up and pop them on the envelope on the pile. But that anxiety was constant. It was there all the way through the day, all the way through the night. Um, and when we have a financial concern like that that's just gnawing away, it's very, very hard to focus on other areas. It's hard to focus on enjoying life, on feeling that you're achieving your potential, on kind of raising yourself up. It's a little bit like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that when that first foundation isn't in place, that security, the psychological needs um, of a roof over your head and having the, the making ends meet, when that foundation isn't there, it's really, really difficult to build up on that and to, to expand and to grow as a person. So that was a massive challenge of continuing with that habit of not actually looking. Um, it also <laughs> made it impossible to budget because how can you budget when you actually don't know what is coming in and out? So I did attempt to budget, um, but it was never really truthful. And maybe you do this too, I don't know. You write a list of all the things that you're meant to be paying and you write a list of all the things that are coming in. That's relatively accurate. But the outgoings, you skip all the bits that you don't want to actually put on paper or that you don't know or you haven't accounted for the fact they are now costing you more. So not looking at the bills actually was caused greater problems than the habit was actually giving me in help. Weighing those up, it's how do we then move away to change that habit? Because whilst it is helping us, it's not helping us as much as it's challenging us. So take your habit that you did from before and that you've got all those positives and now flip it over and look at how it's getting in the way, what the challenges are for you, what negative feelings you're getting from having that. And then in the next part, we'll look at reversing it all and seeing what the goods and the bads are of a totally different habit.